tight race here. It'll be interesting to see who wants to take the lead. They're also fighting for lanes in this event. The lanes from, for the final are drawn from the first four qualifiers or the fastest four qualifiers from both semis and then the outside lanes in the final are drawn from the, drawn from the next four. So like swimming, you think it's an advantage to be in the centre in track and field? Oh, certainly. Those four lanes in the middle are, are vitally important. You know that the top guys are going to be in the middle, so if you run a bad race, say if Carl ran a bad race and ended up in lane eight, it'd have no one to focus on. So here's the setup for the first semi-final. Nigerian and one who was fourth in the World Junior Championships, Raymond Stewart in lane two, who was the bronze medalist behind Johnson and Lewis in Rome, and a finalist in Los Angeles. So from one, there's Andonikan from Nigeria fourth in the World Juniors and fourth in the African track and field. He's done a great job to get to the semi, at semi-finals. Raymond Stewart, Jamaica, finalist in Los Angeles, bronze medalist last year. Has run 9.99 this year. There's a former world record holder, Calvin Smith. First run as an individual in the Olympic Games. One of the big shots here. Desai Williams of Canada. It's been around for so long. Semi-finals in Los Angeles, but has never been running better. There's the king, Carl, defending champion. No man has won the Olympic Games 100 metres four years apart. Lane six, Miles Mills of Ghana, who was the winner of the African Track and Field Championship this year. Mari Mari of Indonesia, fourth in the Asian Track and Field Championships in 1987. And the Brazilian, Arnaldo Silva. Raylene, the action should be from two to five, Stuart, Smith, Williams and Lewis. That's right. I'd say Lewis and Smith are going to have a really tough race. Desai Williams ran quite well in his round yesterday and Raymond Stewart is a regular finalist, bronze medalist from last year's World Championships. We're looking for good things from him too. There's no flying starters here. Lewis shouldn't be giving anybody too big a start, so he should be able to stay relaxed. No, Lewis and, and Smith both tend to wind up towards the end of the race. In fact, decelerate slower, as they've been saying on television. Lewis winds up particularly well from about 30 through to 70, and Carl Smith, I'm sure, can go with him. It's been thought that Calvin Smith's highest speed is as fast as Lewis's. Do you think if they're together at 50, Smith can cause an upset here? I wouldn't be surprised if he tries to pin one on Lewis at this stage because it must give him a psychological lift some hours before the final. Uh, as for Lewis, I don't think it'd harm him too much. I don't think much does. So Lewis goes from five. An hour and a half to the final. And this is where he'll really want to establish himself like he did yesterday in the second round where he ran 9.99. The winds have been swirling a bit in the stadium, but generally they've been tailwinds. And we saw Florence Griffith join her run an Olympic record only half an hour ago. The nearly set semi-final men. Lewis five, Smith in three. And Andonikian, the young Nigerian. The occasion must have been too much for him because he stood up and then wanted to go. So he loosens up a bit. Carl loosens up, walks back. Disconcerting at all for the top runners with a break? It seems to be. Most of them look as though they just want to get on with it. They don't want to muck around with false starts at this stage. They're all set, and Antonikian just moved very way before the gun. It's interesting to see Lewis there when they're in the poised position. He's higher than anybody else. His backside's up higher than anybody else, and it does take him a while to get into stride. He probably has a lot to do with his height. He's got such long legs, he has to get them uncoiled to a certain degree. Could also account for his slowish movement off the blocks because he's got to get himself back down and into a running position. Ben Johnson goes in the next semi-final against Linford Christie, Dennis Mitchell. Calvin Smith, 9.93 in Colorado Springs in 1983. The world champion in the 200 metres. Desai Williams, semi-finalist in 1984. Carl Lewis, the defending champion. And in the history of the Olympic Games, no one has been able to come back four years later and do it again. Lewis was second last year at the World Championships. In the major championships, he's contested ten events and won nine gold medals and one silver medal. Thinks for a moment. 
knows what he has to do. Now settles. With the rest of the field. Smith head upright. Set. Tadio. Away. Lewis slowest out. Williams beat him out easily. Stewart away well. Smith's got some work to do. Here comes Carl now. He gathers them in. Lewis goes through. Smith goes through. And so does Stewart and Williams. And Lewis took forever to wind up. But when he did, it was really special. He's run 9.97 than he ran in the final four years ago. Unbelievable run. Des Desai Williams ran a great race to about 70 metres. Unbelievable the speed he got off the mark. Certainly must have given Carl a fright and will probably pick him up and get him ready for the final. Carl Smith's run a great race to come through in second place. Smith took forever to wind up, but Williams got the fly and Lewis took a while to get him. Desai Williams has got a beautiful acceleration through to 40 metres. You can see... Carl Lewis is working very, very hard to get him. He doesn't want to lose this race. He wants to go through unbeaten. Carl Smith at this stage is working very hard. Head back, and he's pulled through for second place. But Carl Lewis in beautiful form, running with perfect poise. And Raymond Stewart's third, and there's a thought that he may have injured himself. And fourth, Desai Williams. This is the fastest anyone has run at the Olympic Games at sea level. Only Jim Hines in 1968 with a rarefied atmosphere of Mexico City was able to run faster than this. And he's actually relaxed for the last five metres. He hasn't run right through, so he can run faster. He's certainly looking as though he's going to take that gold medal for a second time. So what can Ben do now in the next semi-final? What does he have to do to set up this showdown in Seoul, Raylene? What can Johnson do now to take the points off Lewis? Ben has to actually run as fast or faster if he can to take the, the pressure off himself for the final. If he doesn't come up with a sub-10 second run, he's certainly going to have to do a lot of work in the next hour and a half before the final. 